the hundred thousand songs of milarepa volume 2 is being continued the holy gambopa milarepa's foremost disciple obeisance to all gurus marpa in his interpretation of milarepa's significant dream of the four pillars foretold that the supremely exalted gambopa the heart son of the great yogi mila the laughing vajra would appear as the peerless sage the patrian buddha vajra dakini also told milarepa that he would have one disciple like the sun su and sun another like the moon and 25 accomplished disciples like stars and that gambopa would be the foremost of all like the sun the all perfect buddha saikya muni himself also professed the coming of gambopa in the royal samadhi sutra and elsewhere for instance in the great compassion lotus sutra buddha says ananda in the future after my nirvana a monk called the physician will appear in the north he rendered outstanding services to the previous buddha after having served hundreds of thousands of buddhas in his former lives he is well grounded in virtues and supreme thoughts and has entered the immaculate path of mahayana for the benefit and happiness of many sentient beings he will appear as a well informed man highly versed in the scriptures of the bodhisattvas doctrine who speaks the words of the great vehicle and demonstrates faultlessly and perfectly the mahayana teachings and so at this time of five defilements appear in tibet the snow country of the north dagbo laje l h a j e the physician from dagbo whose fame was heard in all lands he was a great bodhisattva who had reached the 10th final stage of the path and realized it realized its direct insight the jatsang milarepa foresaw him in his illuminating samadhi he blessed gambopa with the grace of samadhi and with the grace of samadhi and at and attracted him with his mind power it was he the great gambopa who dawned upon the buddhist religion and brought many sentient beings to the great bodhi path his life story is vast like the mighty ocean of which this epitome of his biography is but a single drop the lord gambopa was born in the seba valley of nyal in tibet his family was the niwa n y i w a his father a physician called wutsu gambar jalbo had two wives yunlaza and sangdam sangdan dranma each of whom gave birth to a son gambopa was the eldest and was called dunba dharma draug dharma draug his father being an excellent consultant in worldly affairs trained him well so that he became proficient in speech and in consultation when gambopa was 15 he had already learned many tantric teachings of the ningmaba such as the basic tantra of sungwa ninbo heruka galbo the tantras of the wrathful and peaceful buddhas and of the great merciful net holder and many other teachings of the old school he had also mastered the eight branches of medicinal science taught by his father at 22 he married the sister of the powerful local chief dharma i a u i a u i she had all the admirable qualities of a lady they had a son and daughter but a pestilence broke out in that area and the son died gambopa accompanied the corpse to the cemetery and when he returned home found that his daughter had also died a few days later his wife caught the same disease every kind of medicinal treatment was tried and prayers were repeated and sacraments held but in vain after suffering great pain for a long time she was still trying desperately to hold on to life sitting beside her pillow gambopa recited the holy sutra to her he thought she has been trying too hard 
trying so hard to cling to life under such an ordeal and will not let herself die peacefully. This must be due to her extreme attachment to something. He then said to her, Those who do not understand the true nature of samsara are toil worm and overburdened. Those who are compelled to linger in samsara are miserable and pitiful. I am indeed sorry for those unenlightened people who are subject to intense attachment to their dreamlike consorts and relatives. You will not let yourself die peacefully after enduring such a prolonged, unbearable ordeal. This must be due to your clinging to something or someone. If it is the house and land that you cannot abandon, I will offer them to the monks. If it is the jewels that you cannot give up, I will give them to the priests and the poor. What else is there that you cannot bear to leave? We met in this life because of your because of our mutual vows in previous lives. But because of your bad karma, you have now caught this disease. I have tried everything to help, but have only made you suffer more. This painful lesson has taught me to decide that no matter whether you live or die, I shall devote my whole life to the dharma. His wife said, I am now about to die. I am not attached to the land, the house, my jewels or anything else. It is you that I cannot give up. I shall send for my brother Dharma I A U I to prevent you being seduced by women. Besides, as you have said, family life is some in samsara is without true happiness. I hope my dear husband and physician that you will now devote your body and soul to the dharma. Gambopa replied, Even if you recover from this disease, we cannot stay together forever. If you die, I will devote my life to practicing the dharma and will not marry again. Do you want me to swear to it before you? His wife said, I know you are a man who will never go back on your word. But in order to set my mind at rest, I would like you to take an oath before me. Please fetch a witness. Gambopa then called in his uncle, Balshud, to be the witness put the holy sutra written with golden words upon his head and took the oath. His wife said, My dear physician, I shall see from a crack in my grave whether or not you dedicate your life to the dharma. Saying this, she took her husband's hand, gazed into his face with her eyes full of tears and died. Gambopa then divided his property into three parts, using one to pay for his wife's funeral and offerings, another for meritorious charities, and the third to provide for learning and practicing the dharma. He then cremated his wife's corpse, built a stupa, and made a number of sa sa t s a t s a Buddha images with her ashes and bones. Later, this stupa became very famous and people called it Jomo Chod Dan, the stupa of the hostess. It can still be seen in the region of Nyal. After the funeral and winding up his affairs, Gambopa felt very much at ease. He thought it is now time for me to practice the dharma. He then went alone to Nitong and meditated there. Gambopa's uncle Balsud thought, My poor nephew must be heartbroken after the loss of his wife. I must go to console him. So he went to see Gambopa, taking with him much wine and meat. During their talk, Gambopa said to his uncle, Since my wife passed away, I have been feeling very much at ease and happy. This remark made Balsud exceedingly angry. Where could you find as good a wife as your late wife? He cried indignantly. Had Dharma I, A -U -I, heard of this, he would have said that you were breaking the oath. With this, he threw a handful of dust in Gambopa's face, Gambopa merely replied, My dear uncle, have you forgotten the oath I made before my wife with you as a witness? Am I not practicing the dharma as promised? Nephew, you are quite right, said Balsud. Though I have grown old like this, I seldom think of dharma. I really feel very much ashamed of myself. Prosper, my nephew, in your dharma practice. I will take good care of your land and prosperity and property. After some time, without his relative's knowledge, Gambopa went to the Bodor Monastery in the Pan region. There he saw Lama Bodorva Rinchinsal, to whom he said, Precious Lama, I am a native of Nyal. 
and I have come here for the dharma. Please guide me through its gate and keep me for a time. Bodorva replied, I have no Bodorva replied, I have no charity to give you. You must provide your own food and clothing if you want to learn the dharma. Gambopa thought, if I had the means, I would not ask. According to the tantra of Sungva Ninpo, to benefit sentient beings, a guru should have four kinds of compassion. The constant compassion, the spontaneous compassion, the compassion of granting benediction on prayers, and the compassion of guiding the disciples according to their needs. Only thus can a guru help sentient beings. This guru seemed to be lacking in compassion. I doubt whether my karma is linked with him, his, and I cannot venerate him. He soon returned to his native land and prepared 16 ounces of gold as a means for studying the dharma. Then he went to the Jajogri Monastery at Pan received ordination from Lama Jachil as a bhikshu, a fully ordained monk, and was given the name of Sadnam Rinchin, the precious meritorious one. Then, under Professors Shapa Limpa and Shadulva Stimpa Gambopa, studied the Shastras of Dodejan, Mahayana, Sutra Lankara, Nindojan, Abhishmaya Lankara, Nginbotsa, Abhidharma Kosa, N-G-U-N-B-A-T-S-O and others. Guys, I am extremely sorry because I am not able to pronounce this properly but please bear with me. In Mon, he studied the tantras of Jedor, Sangdu and others under Guru Lodan Sherab and received the initiations and peeth instructions from him. From professors Nirunpa and Jajogripa, Gambopa learned numerous teachings of the Gambopa school. Uh, learned numerous teachings of the Gadamba school. Thinking, now I must practice these teachings. He meditated in Jajogri. The Jetson Gambopa was a man whose intelligence and compassion was great, whose clingings and desires were small, whose industriousness and faith towards the Dharma were prodigious, and whose apathy and indolence were negligible. By day, he studied Buddhism diligently, and at night he meditated strictly, or he circumambulated and performed other meritorious acts. Because of his compassion and purity, no insect ever grew on his body. He could live comfortably without food for five or six days, and his body always felt blissful. He could absorb himself in samadhi for many days, and all crude forms of anger, lust, and blindness dwindled away within him. As professed in the Golden Light Sutra, all the signs preceding achievement in the tenth Bhumi, the final and ultimate stage of enlightenment of a Bodhisattva, had appeared unmistakably in his dreams. Sometime afterwards, Gambopa had a vision in which he saw a green yogi dressed in rags who put a hand upon his head and wetting a finger with spittle flicked it in his face. He at once felt his dhyana growing better and deeper. In addition, he gained a decisive and immediate understanding of reality. In an experience fraught with joy, his mind became clearer, lighter and more alert than ever before. He told some monks in the town about this experience and they commented, You were ordained a bhikshu and have been observing the immaculate percepts flawlessly. A monk like you who dreams of yogi and the like will come up against difficulties for these preliminary dreams are conjured up by the demon beghar, beghar, demon beghar. You should therefore go to your teacher, ask him to give you a holy recitation and invite a large group of monks to bless you with the right of 100 
dorma offerings this gambopa did yet the vision of the yogi appeared more often than before at that time in the sunlight happy cave of draugmar boto the jatsang milrepa was setting in motion the wheel of dharma both of the expedient and of the ultimate truth for his heart sons rechung dorje dragpa shaiva au sivan repa and gyan sang dunba for his patrons sese of drin t s e s e of drin and ku ju and for others one day the elders among the repas said to milrepa jatsang you are now very old if one day you go to the pure land we repas will need someone who can act for you to help us in our difficulties and to further our progress on the path our patrons all also need a spiritual leader to increase their merits whom do you think can assume this possibility whoever you have in mind should be given all the peeth instructions without reservation and should be invested with power and status without such a man neither our teachings nor our lineage can spread widely nor can our disciples be properly guided hearing their request the jatsang at first appeared slightly displeased then he replied yes indeed i shall have a good disciple who will develop my teachings immensely i shall this evening observe where he is and will tell you if you return early morning tomorrow the next morning milrepa arose earlier than usual summoned all his disciples and patrons and said like a dharma replenished vessel the man who will receive my peeth instructions in full will come soon he is a fully ordained monk who bears the title of physician and will hold my doctrine and spread it in all the 10 directions last night i dreamed of his coming with a empty crystal vase which i filled with nectar from my silver vase this old father now has a son who will benefit numerous sentient beings and will illumine the doctrine of buddha as the rising sun lights the earth the earth oh i am overflowing with joy and happiness in great delight milarepa sang i bow down to all gurus i pray to the gorgeous ones in the east in is in the east is found the white lion's milk the source of supreme strength one will unless one tastes it never understand its power only after drinking can its strength be felt most deeply yet only the deva indra can imbibe it in the south the great tiger leaps with all its with all his might great and majestic as this is one can never understand it without an actual context only by vying with a tiger can one fully appreciate its leap but only the great dombi heruka rides it in the west the jurmo fish has a bitter gall nothing in this world can taste more bitter yet without directing sam- directly sampling it none can imagine how it feels only after tasting it can one fully understand its bitterness but only the dragon gobo jobo has experienced it in the north great is the power of the blue gem dragon yet without a formal contest its strength is never felt only after wrestling with this monster can one fully understand its might but only the athlete deva galu galucha matches it the milk of the white lioness in the east must be poured into a golden bowl not into any common vessel lest the vessel break and the milk be lost the holy teaching of naropa and medripa is deep and most profound yet if one does not practice it one sees nothing deep therein only after one practiced can only after one has practiced can one fully understand its depth this is the teaching my father marpa had this is the teaching milrepa practiced milrepa's experience insight and instructions are always most effective and precise yet those of little weight cannot receive them they are only given to the able student yet they all will be imparted to the monk by coming to the monk 
माई कमिंग हेर टू बी कंटिन्यूड